Hi, my name is David. Today we're going to do number 69 on the code square root x. We're giving a non negative integer x. Compute and return the square root of x. So in this example, the input of x is 4. So the square root of 4 is 2. And there's another edge case here. In that case, that the square root is not an uh, integer, it has decimals to it. For example, we have an input of eight, the square root of eight is 2.82 and so forth. It only wants us to return the integer part of it, which is two. So assuming this problem, we can't use the square root functionality or the built-in exponent function for it as well. So it's gonna be a pretty more math, using math to solve this problem programmatically. So how we're gonna do this is that there's a couple of edge cases that will improve our code's efficiency where the square root of X will be itself. So in this case, our constraints start from zero. So zero and one, the square root of zero and one is the, the same number. So we can return X if it's zero and one. If x is zero or one, return x. So this is the case where the square root of the number is itself. And this is gonna improve efficiency because we're gonna have to do a for loop and we can skip uh, these numbers. So now we can loop through x, x starting at two from two to x, since we know that it's not gonna be zero and one. And inside of this, we can multiply that number by itself. And if it's equals x, that means it's a square number. So we're looking if that number is the square root of it. So if i times i, so i is gonna be the, the number we're currently doing the for loop in times i is equal to x. That means it's the square root, so return x. And then we're gonna keep doing that. So in this example, two times two is four, it gives us automatically to return x. So now we have to look at, and then if this was like nine, it would be, two times two is four, that's not it. So it doesn't do anything. It keeps going into it. And then it goes through the loop again for three, three times three is nine. So that'll give us a square root. So now we have to take account this part. So we do this one. So we start at two, two times two is four. So that's not it. And then we go to three times three is nine. So as you can see it gets, to one that's above x. As soon as this, this product multiplying the i by itself gets above it, the first time we return the previous i. So we turn i minus one. So if i times i is greater than x, return i minus one. So that will give us the, the number before it that we need. So that to do it. So first we do our edge cases. If mean gets to x is less than or equal to one, return x. So now we loop it. So for let i equals two, i is less than or equal to x, i plus plus. And now we're gonna check if it's a square root. So if a square root is when it times it by the same number, i times i is equal. Sorry, not x. i times i. That means we hit the square root. So we turn i. 
now we do the case where it's a, a decimal. So if i times i is greater than x, return i minus one. Great. Great, we got it. So now the time and space complexity. So although we're looping through all of, of x, we'll see what case is n, the highest it will ever go, it will be the square root of it. So, but we couldn't really use the square root um, functionality, the method in it. So it's gonna be O of log n because as it grades, gets exponentially bigger, the square root doesn't get it. It goes like that because once I gets bigger, it doesn't proportionally get bigger. It gets narrowly bigger because it's, your, it's your only go up to the square root of it, which is log of n, but we can't use it. It won't go as far as this. And then the space complexity is going to be O of one because we're using constant variables here, um, constant space. And that's a, how you solve this problem. It's a pretty math problem, but it's a good one. Thank you so much.